Hi, this is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR Pharma Tube. In the previous videos, we discussed an introduction to anti-diabetic agents, insulin and insulin preparations. If you did not watch them, I have given the links in the description below this video. Watch them. In this lesson, I would like to discuss the sulfonyl ureas, which are a type of oral hypoglycemic agents and their individual drugs such as tolbutamide, chlorpropamide, glipizide and glimepiride. By the end of this video, you will understand oral hypoglycemic agents that act as anti-diabetic agents, their chemistry, classification and uses. Also, you will learn the sulfonyl ureas which are a class of oral hypoglycemic agents and the individual drugs such as tolbutamide, chlorpropamide, glipizide and glimepiride. Oral hypoglycemic agents As we learned from the previous video, the drawback of insulin and insulin preparations is that they get destroyed in the gastrointestinal tract. This has provided a scope to search for orally active hypoglycemic drugs. The oral hypoglycemic agents reduce blood glucose concentration in type 2 diabetic people. These drugs are taken by mouth and belong to the chemical classes of sulfonyl ureas and biguanides. Besides these two major chemical categories, certain recently developed drugs include meglitinides, thiazolidine dienes and alpha glucosidase inhibitors. All these agents are used to treat type 2 diabetes that is not controlled by diet and exercise. These drugs reduce blood sugar by different mechanisms and may be used in various combinations for additive effects. Some are also combined with insulin. In this lesson, we learn the first class of oral hypoglycemic agents that is sulfonyl ureas. Sulfonyl ureas The sulfonyl ureas are the oldest and largest group of oral agents. The discovery of sulfonyl ureas as oral hypoglycemic agents was made accidentally. In 1942, M. John Bond and colleagues observed that some sulfonamides prepared for antibacterial properties caused hypoglycemia in experimental animals. One such compound was 5-isopropyl 2-sulfonylamido 1,3,4-thiadiazole. This is a sulfonamide derivative since it possesses para-aminobenzene sulfonamide moiety in its structure. Thus, the sulfonyl ureas are chemically related to sulfonamide antibacterial drugs. Further, the structure was found to possess an aryl sulfonyl thiourea explained an aryl sulfonyl thiourea type of arrangement. This led to the synthesis of a series of sulfonyl ureas and 1-butyl 3-sulfonyl urea that is carbutamide became the first clinically useful sulfonyl urea for the treatment of diabetes. The drug was later withdrawn because of its adverse effects on the bone marrow but it provided a lead for the development of other useful drugs. As the 4-amino group characterizes the bacteriostatic activity of all sulfonamides, it was replaced by other substituents in the same position to exclude any antibacterial activity. The other nitrogen of the urea moiety carried different types of substituents. Sulfonyl ureas are classified into first and second generation drugs. Tolbutamide, chlorpropamide, tolazamide and acetohexamide formed the first generation of orally active hypoglycemic agents. Glibenclamide that is gliburide, glipizide, gliclazide, glimepiride and gliquidone are among the second generation hypoglycemic sulfonyl ureas. The second generation agents are considerably more potent than the first generation agents. The first generation sulfonyl ureas are not commonly used today because they have a long duration of action and a higher incidence of adverse reactions and are more likely to react with other drugs. The main adverse effect is hypoglycemia. All the first and second generation compounds act by stimulating the beta cells of the pancreas to release insulin. The sulfonyl ureas are not effective if the beta cells of the pancreas are unable to release a sufficient amount of insulin to meet a patient's needs. The sulfonyl ureas may be represented by the structure shown. Sulfonyl ureas are urea derivatives with an aryl sulfonyl group in the first position and an aliphatic group at the third position. 
the aliphatic group R2 confers lipophilic properties to the molecule. Maximal activity results when R2 consists of 3 to 6 carbon atoms as in chlorpropamide, tolbutamide and acetohexamide. Aryl groups at R2 generally give toxic compounds. The R1 group on the aromatic ring primarily influences the duration of action of the compound. The examples of drugs of first and second generation sulfonyl ureas are given in the table. Coming to the individual drugs, the first drug is tolbutamide. Tolbutamide is the first generation sulfonyl urea and was discovered in 1956. It is used in the management of type 2 diabetes if diet alone is not effective. It is chemically 1-butyl 3-paratoline sulfonyl urea or 1-butyl 3-4-methyl phenyl sulfonyl urea. It is an N-sulfonyl urea that consists of 1-butyl urea having a tocyl group attached at the third position. It has a role as a hypoglycemic agent, a potassium channel blocker, a human metabolite and an insulin secretary. Synthesis of tolbutamide. Tolbutamide is prepared in a single step reaction by interaction of sodium salt of toline parasulfonamide with butyl isocyanate. Tolbutamide occurs as a white, slightly bitter taste crystalline powder. It is insoluble in water but soluble in alcohol, chloroform or aqueous alkali and melts at 126 degrees centigrade. It is stable in air. Tolbutamide stimulates the secretion of insulin from islet gamma cells of the pancreas. It is readily absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. Its half-life is 4 to 8 hours. It is metabolized in liver. Its duration of action is short, that is 6 to 10 hours, due to its rapid metabolism. So, it is safe for use in older people. It is oxidized rapidly in vivo to 1-butyl 3-paracarboxyphenyl sulfonyl urea, which is inactive compound. It does not undergo acetylation like antibacterial sulfonamides as it does not have a para-amino group. Uses of tolbutamide. Tolbutamide drug may be used in the management of type 2 diabetes. It is one of the most widely used anti-diabetic agents. It is used for the management of mild uncomplicated diabetes mellitus. It is used for type 2 diabetes mellitus of medium severity with no expressed microvascular complications. The next drug is chlorpropamide. Chlorpropamide is a derivative of benzene sulfonamide. Chemically, it is 1-parachlorophenyl sulfonyl 3-propyl urea. It is a drug used to treat type 2 diabetes mellitus. It is a long-acting first-generation sulfonyl urea. It is an N-sulfonyl urea that is urea in which a hydrogen attached to one of the nitrogens is substituted by 4-chlorobenzene sulfonyl group and a hydrogen attached to other nitrogen is substituted by propyl group. It is N-sulfonyl urea and a member of monochlorobenzenes. The synthesis of chlorpropamide involves four steps. In the first step, chlorobenzene reacts with chlorosulfonic acid to yield 4-chlorobenzene sulfonyl chloride. In the second step, the 4-chlorobenzene sulfonyl chloride is aminated with liquid ammonia to convert sulfonyl chloride moiety to a sulfonamide moiety to form 4-chlorobenzene sulfonamide. In the third step, the sulfonamide is refluxed with ethyl chloroformate produces N4-chlorophenyl sulfonyl carbamate. And in the last step, that is in step 4, the carbamate upon condensation with N-propylamine yields the desired chlorpropamide. Chlorpropamide is a white crystalline powder with no characteristic taste or smell. It is practically insoluble in water, soluble in alcohol and sparingly soluble in chloroform. It will form water-soluble salts in basic solutions. It exhibits polymorphism. Its acid dissociation constant pKa is 5 at 20 degrees centigrade. Like other sulfonyl ureas, chlorpropamide acts by stimulating beta cells of the pancreas to release insulin. It increases both basal insulin secretion and meal stimulated insulin secretion. Maximal plasma concentrations are reached 3 to 5 hours and plasma half life is 36 hours. This drug is more resistant to conversion to inactive metabolites than is tolbutamide and as a result has a much longer duration of action. 
It is an oral antihyperglycemic agent used for the treatment of non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus that is type 2 diabetes. It belongs to the sulfonyl urea class of insulin secretagogues. The next drug is glipizide. Glipizide is a cyclohexyl sulfonyl urea analog similar to acetohexamide and gliburide. It differs from gliburide in the structure of the amide region of the molecule in which the 2-methoxy 5-chlorobenzoic acid part is replaced with 6-methyl pyrazine carboxylic acid. It is approximately 100 times more potent than tolbutamide. The maximal hypoglycemic effects of these two agents are similar. It is rapidly absorbed on oral administration with a serum half-life of 2 to 4 hours, whereas the hypoglycemic effects range from 12 to 24 hours. Synthesis of glipizide 6-methylpyrazine 2-carboxylic acid is initially reacts with thionyl chloride resulting in the corresponding chloride which undergoes further action with 4-2-aminoethylbenzene sulfonamide forming the corresponding amide. The resulting sulfonamide reacts with cyclohexyl isocyanate in basic conditions forms the desired glipizide. Glipizide is off-white, odorless powder with a pKa of 5.9. It is insoluble in water and alcohols but soluble in 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide solution. Glipizide works by stimulating the pancreas to release insulin and increases tissue sensitivity to insulin. The drug is absorbed rapidly on oral administration. Its serum half-life is 2 to 4 hours and it has a hypoglycemic effect that ranges from 12 to 24 hours. Metabolism of glipizide is generally through oxidation of the cyclohexane ring to the para-hydroxy and meta-hydroxy metabolites. A minor metabolite that occurs involve the N-acetyl derivative which results from the acetylation of the primary amine following hydrolysis of the amide system by amidase enzymes. Indications for use and the mechanism of action are similar to those of gliburide. Glipizide is sold under the brand name Glucotrol. It is an anti-diabetic medication of the sulfonyl urea class used to treat type 2 diabetes. It is used together with a diabetic diet and exercise. It is not indicated for use by itself in type 1 diabetes. It is taken by mouth. Effects generally begin within half an hour and can last up to a day. And the last drug is glimepiride. Glimepiride is classified as a second generation sulfonyl urea used in the management of type 2 diabetes mellitus to improve glycemic control. It is very similar to glipizide with the exception of their heterocyclic rings. Instead of the pyrazine ring found in glipizide, glimepiride contains a pyrrolidine system. Thus, it is a sulfonamide, a N-acyl urea and a N-sulfonyl urea. Glimepiride is a white to yellowish white crystalline odorless powder and is practically insoluble in water. Glimepiride works mainly to lower blood glucose by stimulating the release of insulin from pancreatic beta cells. It is metabolized primarily through oxidation of the alkyl side chain of the pyrrolidine with a minor metabolic route involving acetylation of the amine. Its half-life varies from 5 to 9 hours depending on the frequency of multiple dosing. Glimepiride is marketed under the brand name Amaril as oral tablets and is typically administered once daily with breakfast. It is used to treat type 2 diabetes and it is less preferred than metformin. A note, patients who are taking certain sulfonyl ureas such as chlorpropamide and glimepiride should not drink alcohol. It can interact with these drugs and cause a facial flushing reaction. This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That is all in this video, sulfonyl ureas of oral hypoglycemic agents. In the next video, we will discuss the biguanides, the other class of oral hypoglycemic agents. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.